Alex Deck joined by newly appointed General Manager Chris Albright. Chris, thank you for taking the time to sit down with me and welcome to FCC. I'm excited to get started. Thanks for having me. So when you hear that title, General Manager of FC Cincinnati, what does that mean to you? Uh, it's an exciting opportunity. Uh, honestly, when the, when the process first started and, and I knew I was being considered for the, for the job, uh, this is a club that, that has the ability to be one of the, the, the giants in MLS. Um, as I went through the process even more, getting to know the people, uh, Jeff and the ownership group, Carl, Meg, uh, really just made me feel welcome and, and further kind of solidified in my mind that this was the, the right place for me to be. How challenging was this for you personally to make this move? I know you're from the Philadelphia area, you're leaving your hometown, and you were with the union organization for almost the last 10 years. Uh, it, uh, challenging a little bit, but at the same time, I think my, my family and I were really excited by this, that, by this adventure, frankly. Um, and I think, you know, Philadelphia and, and Cincinnati, I think, share a lot of the same values. They're both crazy sports towns. <laughs> Um, which is something that, that we can, you know, uh, are very familiar with. And, and so I think there's a lot of synergies between the two cities uh, that, that my family's excited about. And, and honestly, just the opportunity to be at a club like this has really trumped any other kind of fears of, of, of taking the leap. And with Philadelphia, you guys won the Supporters' Shield last year. Congratulations on Thank that. Thank you. When you look at that, was that a big accomplishment that you could then say, okay, I'm ready for the next challenge in my career? Yeah, I think it was kind of the proof of concept for what we were doing in Philadelphia, developing players, kind of co committing to a style of play. Uh, you know, I'd been there 10 years as, as both a player and, a, and an executive, and I think it was the, the culmination of a lot of hard work, uh, hard work by, by ownership and, and uh, Jay and, and Richie really um, believing in, in sort of that model. Um, and, and the Supporter Shield was a, was a nice reward for, for everyone that put in that work. Um, and my hope is to come here and be able to, to take those things I've, I've learned. And while it's a, it's a, different, um, it's a different task here and, and it's a different model, uh, you know, using those things to be able to, you know, to help eventually, you know, bring a championship here someday. When you talk about kind of the, the recipe for success that you guys had built there, how do you think you can apply it to FCC? Uh, it, it, it's really about the people, first and foremost. Uh, you know, I think we did a really good job in Philadelphia of where we maybe didn't have some of the just economic resources of some of the other teams. We were able to, to build infrastructure and, and really count on people to do their jobs um, and to create an environment for players that uh, was one that was welcoming, where they were developing and where they were able to compete at their, their highest uh, potential on the weekend. And so I think you, you couple those, uh, you know, the things that we practiced and the things I learned in Philadelphia and, and bring them to a, a place like this with, with the stadium and the training facility and the, and the ownership group and their, their hunger to, to be winners. It's, uh, it's an exciting proposition. You talk about the facilities, the infrastructure, the ownership group. Were those all some of the most intriguing elements about coming here? Absolutely. Uh, one of the hardest things about uh, getting uh, or signing players in MLS is, is having them want to come to MLS. Mm -hmm. um, that's always the, the first challenge. And when you're able to sell the vision um, of the ownership group and then be able to give them tangible things like this incredible stadium and, and, the, and the training facility, you're able to paint a picture in a player's mind that it, it's a place for them and their, and their family and a, and a place to go achieve great things, whether that's to to come here and win championships, to come here and be, be sold back to, to bigger clubs. Um, obviously the first goal is winning, but uh, there's a lot of compelling stories we can make uh, and, and tell players to, to, to recruit them here to, to Cincinnati. You have over two decades of experience in MLS, both as a player and on the technical side. You were the, the chief capologist. You even did some international scouting and obviously the technical director as well. How much are you looking forward to taking all of these traits and all these assets that you've learned and developed throughout the year and or throughout the years and applying them to kind of your own team. Yeah, well, I think again, two different two different models uh, in, in Philadelphia and Cincinnati. But what we were in Philadelphia was efficient, um, and and whether you know we were towards the bottom of the league and sort of our, our player spend, we put a lot of money into the academy um, to to be fair to ownership, um, but it doesn't matter. Efficiency is efficiency. You know, whether you're spending a billion dollars or a dollar, you still have to be efficient with that amount of money. And I think that's something that 
we, we did really well, frankly, uh, and something that I'll be looking to bring over here. Uh, obviously, I have to have a bigger eye to the entire organization and the long view of, of being com competitive. Um, but in the near term, there's certainly some things that we can clean up, implement some processes to identify players that, that we believed in and, and again, try to be as efficient as possible. You talk about identifying some players. There's about a month left in the season. What do you want to accomplish in, in this time frame before November 7th? Well, it's really an evaluation period um, for everyone. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a first time GM, so to speak, so I'm being evaluated. Everyone's being evaluated. Uh, I, I've said, and I talked to Jeff and Carl through the process, you know, I, I feel like I can learn more watching five, six, seven training sessions than I can five, six, seven games. Because um, you really understand how players interact and, and uh, what motivates them, how, they, uh, how they're accepted or not accepted in the group. So really just evaluating, I think that the, the team, the first team, uh, is the most important objective of the next month. Uh, and at the same time, you know, the, we clearly have to identify the, the next head coach for FC Cincinnati. I was going to ask you about that. Currently, your former teammate from the LA Galaxy, Tyrone Marshall, is leading the charge, kind of taking the team through the rest of the season. Do you have any head coach candidates in mind? I mean, I, I certainly have ideas in mind. Uh, you know, one thing that uh, was was clear when FC Cincinnati set out on a GM search was that uh, the, the MLS experience was sort of non-negotiable uh, as, as, as a prerequisite uh, and that will be the same in the in the coaching search um, there's a lot of qualified candidates out there uh, whether they're you know domestic American ex MLS players or or coaches that have been sort of uh, Americanized so to speak by you know being here and, and understanding the league uh, there's a lot of great candidates out there uh, it's and it's our job to sort of you know for me to understand and really get my hands dirty in the, in the club and, and understand you know who's the best fit to to lead this team and uh, into success on the field finally what would your message be to supporters who have maybe been a little disheartened or discouraged over the last few years <sighs> Uh, one is, you know, I grew up a Philadelphia sports fan, so <laughs> dis discouraged and disheartened is something I'm very familiar with. Um, and, and frankly, something that, that we were able to turn around as, as uh, leaders of the Philadelphia Union. And yeah, listen, I understand what it's like to be a fan, first and foremost. And so I have that empathy and I was at the game last week and see the, the fans yearning for a winner. Um, we're going to do everything we can to, to make fans believe again that, that we can be a winner. Um, and I'm committed, uh, the head coach, whoever that will be, will be committed to doing that, to do that. Um, because again, this is, a, this is an opportunity unlike many in MLS where all this infrastructure and all the support is out in front of you uh, to kind of to, to waste that. Uh, at the expense of the fans is, is really unfair, frankly. And so we're going to do everything we can to, to turn it around. Awesome. Well, we're thrilled to have you here. Thank you so much for the time, Chris, and welcome to FCC. Thank you.